So you would kind of have to be living under a rock to not see that there is a little bit of a war between the sexes. Every time I open my phone, there seems to be another video of a woman saying, he didn't deserve you, you know, slay queen, and all of the comments of women agreeing with her. A lot of times what I'm not seeing is the same for men, is the same as a, a man posting about the demise of his relationship and then a bunch of women going, oh yeah, you slay king. She definitely did not deserve you. So I think these are some of the reasons why men are frustrated and why they are going their own way. Number one, marriage is not really for men. If you ask probably 90% of men out there if they want to get married right now, they would probably say, why? What's the point? Marriage doesn't really mean anything else for me. I have the relationship, I get the girl, I get to have sex with the girl, I get to have kids, and I can support her. But where they see other friends that have made the mistake of getting married, where they've seen half of their life savings washed out, where they are alone without their kids, where custody has been ripped away from them, where they're living in an apartment, a one bedroom apartment with their two kids, trying to make ends meet because they've been kicked out of the house. So I think we have to like take a step back, right? And think to ourselves as women, why is there a benefit for a man to get married? Unless he is extremely religious and or Christian or believes that, you know, in the sanctity of the family. But I understand when they say it's, it's really hard for them to believe in that when women are filing 80% of the time. Granted, a lot of women file because they need the child support or they need the alimony because they don't, they never made as much or they're not making as much. So it's kind of like there's a greater sense of urgency for a woman to file because of finances. But men are like, okay, great, fine. We're just going to take the, we're just going to take it off the table. Then we'll just be common law. We'll just, We'll just hang out. We'll have a relationship because if there's no guarantee that that woman is going to stay, then why sacrifice so much? They're hearing it from their friends. They're seeing it on the media. You can't go a day without hearing about this statistic that divorce is happening all around us. And furthermore, people are just choosing not to get married. But what if marriage is just an antiquated system? What if it doesn't matter anymore? And, and what if it was for women all along. And now we're just kind of seeing an evolution of that where men are saying, what's it for anyway? And I don't necessarily disagree with them. If you're making your own money and if you're a woman who is working and helping to support the family, then maybe we need to talk about having separate bank accounts. Maybe we need to talk about a prenup. Maybe we need to really go into this as a business does, as two partners would starting a business. I have partners, I have business, and we signed contracts. We had it all laid out so that if there was a dissolution of the relationship, that we would know exactly what to do. There's no hard feelings. There was no emotion involved. This was about a logical decision and two people coming together to have a goal. And if that goal was not met, or if one party decided that they weren't in that goal, then the contract would be dissolved and, and each party would be made whole. So that's my suggestion is like, if we're going to consider marriage, women, we have to be more logical when we think about this, we have to take emotion out of it. And as I mean, as a woman, like, hello, that might be some near impossible, but I'm a pretty logical woman and I see things clearly and, and I've been in the business world. So I have a bit of a, a, a greater understanding of how these things should go. It's like, what does love have to do with it? So I think that's one of the reasons why they're going their own way. They just don't see the purpose in it. And with today's women, with what I'm seeing, I'm not quite sure I disagree. If you're going to get married, that you need to have a contractual discussion before. And if the contract does not work, then maybe it's just not a good idea to get married. So the second thing that I hear quite a bit from men, and again, I, it's very hard for me to disagree with them. What I'm seeing, what I'm seeing on social media, what I'm seeing from my clients, what they're telling me, what's out there is the lack of traditional 
women and women expecting men to be still traditional. There's certain things that men should be expected to do. I believe that a man should pay for the first date, whether that is coffee, whether that is a bottle of wine. There's so many things that you can do that is not expensive. And if you are more of a traditional man, I truly believe you should be paying for the first date. But, you know, should a woman be dating five different guys at a time? No. Should a woman be sleeping with five guys at a time? No. Should a woman be on OnlyFans? I don't think I, not my cup of tea. You know, should a woman string a guy along and just take him for a ride and take him out to, so she can get free dinners? Like women don't know how to cook. They're not cleaning. I mean, and I'm sorry, but like the domestic duties were traditional women roles. And I understand that we are both working, you know, but there comes a point in time where you have to delineate roles in a household to make it work. You know, there's just certain things that were passed down from female to female. Most females don't even know how to sew a button on a jacket, let alone cook a Thanksgiving meal. So, you know, I get we're all busy. I understand that life is different for our parents, but you know, there's sayings that have been around for 30 years, right? Like the 30 years, more like thousands of years, but you know, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Nobody just made like, they didn't just make that saying up. It's been around for a long time. So it's like women are expecting men to still do these things, but then they're not taking the time to invest in becoming like wifey material. And that's why I think there are older women like myself, you know, other women out there that are, are realizing that our mothers kind of failed us, that they didn't really teach us because we got caught up in this whole sexual revolution situation. And the women that I see that have done very well with men typically grew up in the South, typically grew up in more traditional families, typically saw their mom being a homemaker, but we have demonized that amongst women in our culture. We don't appreciate homemakers. And, and I will say that feminism has not helped that. I was caught up in that as well. Being a homemaker was looked upon as negatively. And I remember judging my friends for it. I remember looking down at them and saying, "Ugh, like just a housewife. That is such a common group think of women. So until we like abolish this, until we accept women for who they are and say, it's okay to do this. Like it's okay to learn to how to, to run a household and have these domestic duties. Men are like, well, okay, what do we, why? What's the point? Like these women, why would I want to be in a relationship with them? I'm just, I can go on a nap or I can get sex for whatever, you know, and I don't have to be in a relationship or I have porn or it's like not worth the trouble. I was on a podcast the other day and this came up and it is the third reason why men are going their own way is because I don't think that women are dating based on potential anymore. Like the, all the ladies said that their guy had to make six figures. Like he had this, he had to have that. And I see it. I see it with young women that they think it, it is kind of funny. The whole delusional calculator, they think that men should be making a certain amount of money. Like, and there's no potential for growth. I'll tell you, my godparents have been married for, I think it's going on 55 years. I went to their 50th anniversary a couple of years ago. And um, she always tells the story. Uh, I'm very close with my godparents. They've been a part of my life. Uh, my dad died, so they raised me. Basically, my godfather raised me. And she, my godmother would always tell this cute story about they only had a certain amount of money for food. And she had, you know, baked some chili, burned it to a crisp, you know, and you know, when you like bake chili and it gets really burnt on the bottom, like the flavor of burn, like radiates throughout the pot. I've only done it once, but man, like it, the whole dish is like ruined because it just smell, it smells like burnt beans. She had like burnt this chili so bad. And she was, you know, newly married to my godfather. And he just, he just makes fun of her, you know, they made fun of her this whole time, you know, the 50 years they've been married. He's like, remember when, you know, I brought home my $25 paycheck and you burnt the chili. It's like they were poor and they rose up together. You know, she had a master's, he was a lawyer, they were dirt poor. But at the end, 
right? They're in their seventies. They live on a golf course. They're in a, you know part of a country club. Like there is this story of how they supported one another and she stayed home to raise the kids while he could work on his career. There was like this, it's an amazing story of teamwork, but I don't think you hear those stories as much anymore. It's like, if you're not making a certain amount, the fact that women are asking men how much they're making on the first date or before they even get together is like such a boundary violation. I couldn't even imagine asking someone what they make on the first date. It is just unbelievably disrespectful. So again, men are like, if I'm not going to be able to measure up to her standards and we're just starting to date, like, why would I continue this? Why would I even date in the first place? If I know that if I'm making you know $60,000 a year, that's not going to be enough for the majority of 80% of women. Our values are just so screwed up, especially in America. Our, our country is just, we are really struggling in this arena. So the fourth one, and you'll hear kind of this dichotomy where women are longing for men to approach them, are longing for men to come out and you know, approach them at a bar and pick them up. But then you have the Me Too movement. You have, you know, uh, 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 essay charges. You have men going, well, I've been humiliated by a woman. I had a client who said he was straight up laughed at, that he was humiliated for walking up to a woman that he didn't know, you know, hitting on her or her. she was with a friend group and they all laughed at him, publicly shamed him because he got rejected. So when that happens one time in a man's life, it could literally scar him for the rest of his, his time. And he would, he'll never go up to another woman again. So women, unfortunately, I never really saw it until I was in this space, until I was starting to talk to men more and understand their perspective. And it's like, women can be effing cruel, so mean. And there, men will just like box you and pound it out and then hug, you know, five minutes later. But women, what? some of the words that they use are just can be brutal. The risk versus the reward at this point doesn't seem to be worth it for men, especially when they don't know if that girl is going to completely turn around the story. And maybe it's somebody at work. Maybe it's someone he knows. Maybe it's a friend group. Maybe it's, you know, someone that he's connected to, or he's walking up to a girl and he has no idea if she is going to throw a tantrum because he said, hello, you look beautiful. How she's going to react is a very different story. So it's, it's sad because some of these women have spoiled it for the majority of women that do want traditional men, that do want men to be more masculine and to approach. And the last one I think is dating expenses. The apps were almost a good thing or the apps were a good thing or a horrendous thing. When you have so many options, when you could be going out on a date as a woman, if you're attractive five times a week, and if you think about a man and if he goes out and he dates like that, if you're taking a woman out to dinner three or four times a week, or even twice a week and spending 50 to a hundred dollars, you know, four or $500 a month on dinner dates that don't materialize to anything where people don't want commitment after the fact, in my opinion, I would say to the guy, if like I was his financial advisor, I'd be like, that's a bad investment you could be buying a couple shares of Tesla every month with what you're doing. <laughs> so like, don't do it, you know? I personally, as a dating coach, I suggest never to go out to dinner on the first date. I always suggest coffee or I always suggest something light, something cheap, so that the, until they know that the woman is truly invested in them, until date like three or four where they have some momentum and they know that the girl's not just using them or gonna ghost them. That's just the reality of the marketplace right now. As women, we have to understand that there have been other women that have screwed us royally and have ruined a lot of men. So if you're a woman and you're expecting dinner on the first date and fine, if you're a 10 and that's the time that guy, that's the type of guy that you're going after, great, more power to you. But a lot of us just like normal, nice women are fine with coffee or, or at least we need to be fine with coffee because 
Again, cities are incredibly expensive to live in. The interest rates are out of control. Inflation is gratefully coming down, but still like everybody is struggling to live in their means. And if you're talking about investing, if you're talking about saving, like everyone's living paycheck to paycheck. So to expect a man to just dish out money, like it's going out of style, unrealistic. Okay. So, you know, look, as a female, you got to have some empathy. You have to put yourself in a man's shoes and, and women are learning as you can see that if they don't, they're going to be alone and they're going to be with their cats and they've accepted that. And some women don't, some women are going their own way too. But if you want to have a relationship, we are going to have to bring some empathy to the sexes and to understand what men are going through. And women, I know if you're watching my channel, there's, there's about 20% of you. I see you. If you don't understand a man's struggle in this dating world, in this dating life, then you're going to be single. So we need to have some empathy and men, I hope you feel validated because I do understand what you're going through. And I understand after talking to the hundreds of men that I've talked to, why you feel the way that you feel. So be picky, understand what you're getting into be very transparent with what you're looking for, have these hard conversations and don't expect any less or don't accept any less. We have to have empathy and understanding for one another when it comes to this. So ladies, if you want to be in a relationship, go out to coffee for the first date and like be happy because that man is working really hard. Just know if a woman comes to you and she is complaining that you're not taking her to a five-star dinner, or if she is giving you options or picking the most expensive thing on the menu or acting like a princess, I don't care how good, look, good looking she is. I don't care how much you want to go out with her. It's not worth it. Save your peace, save your happiness, take inventory of the woman that you are choosing, get back out there. And there are women out there that do have empathy and understanding for you, but you just gotta, you gotta screen for them. They're unicorns with red backgrounds. No, I'm just kidding. But they they are out there. I understand where you're coming from and we have to we have to look at dating a little bit differently nowadays. Having empathy and understanding for one another is the only way that we're going to heal this. If you found this helpful, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next one.